Wow. Wow, it's like full in here. I have to Wow. Hey everyone, my name is Jenna Stallsmith. It is such an honor to be here tonight to be able to speak in front of you guys. Um, last time I did speak once before in front of junior high though, so senior high. Hey guys, it's me, it's Jenna, and I'm in the house. Are you ready for this? <laughs> Yeah, so I'm going to share a little bit about me in case you guys don't know so you feel comfortable. Um, obviously, my name is Jenna Stallsmith. I am a senior at Knock High School. We graduate in three days. Um, yeah, I'm very excited. Yeah, um, I am going to Cedarville University in Ohio. I will be majoring in nursing and minoring in missions. Um, my dream is to go to the Dominican Republic specifically and work at clinicals there because I've been there so many times, I just love it. But I'll go where God calls me to. I'm okay with that, I'm okay. Um, I am a eighth grade girls small group leader here. Yeah, fun fact, they're graduating tomorrow from middle school, which is a thing. It's a cool thing. It's a little weird, but it's a cool thing. Um, so congratulations to eighth graders. Um, but before I go into the lesson, I'm going to pray. So let's bow our heads. Dear God, thank you so much for this opportunity for you to be able to speak through me and just use me as your servant and a light to these students that came out tonight. God, I pray that I am just able to be calm and confident in the words that I say because you are just so good and that you fill me up and that I'm able to just Spread your word and your amazing love on prayer to these kids. I pray that we just have a great night and that you hold off this rain, but you keep it nice and cool like this. Thank you for all that you've done. Amen. All right, so um, I am now part of the presentation team, um, which you guys probably don't know what all of these like positions are behind youth group, but there's content creation team, there's worship directors, there's presentation, presentation team. Um, I am part of the presentation team, which means that I get to come up here and speak in front of you guys. And also I can lead games um, and do announcements. So that's what those cool people are. But as being part of the presentation team, we are given lessons to talk about for the series. And as we saw on the video, the series is brave, um, which is awesome because we get to learn how to be brave in our faith um, throughout everything, throughout school, work, our families, our friends, we learn how to be brave. And so last Tuesday we heard A-Rod speak about our identity. And we learned how because God loves us, we have a set plan and we have a set purpose. And we're able to live that out because he loves us. And today I get to talk to you guys about prayer. And the lesson that it was, it was titled Bold Prayer. And I remember whenever I, I picked it and I sat down and I I was just praying over it, and I was like, okay, bold prayer, bold prayer. What does bold even mean? So I looked up some synonyms. Do we have them? Hey, it's me. Okay, so some synonyms for bold are daredevil, which don't at me, but daredevil is one of my favorite, in my opinion, the best superhero TV show. So don't at me, but that's the best, um, if you've seen it. And if you haven't, can't be friends. But Courageous is also another synonym. Fearless, adventurous, and confident. And for me, whenever I put the word confident in front of prayer, that made more sense. Because I was able to really understand confidence. We understand what confidence is, right? We understand that in confidence, we can do bigger things. In confidence, we can stand on a stage and speak out the word of God. In confidence, we can go up to a friend and maybe talk about God or talk about something that's holding us back. Confidence is something more understandable. So I was like, okay, I got this far. So now let's think about confidence prayer. And I found a verse, actually, and it's in 1 John 5, 14. And it says this, This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So I read this, and this verse is awesome. It says, in the confidence that we have in approaching God. The confidence that we have in approaching God, um, we will ask for anything and he hears us. So I was like, okay, confidence in our prayer. The Bible says it. It's a thing. I got this. And I thought about my own life and I thought about how I pray. And I don't know about you guys, but I, I pray, pray pretty regularly. And I thought about the most recent prayer that I've done. And I was like, I don't know, Jenna, that wasn't, that wasn't really confident. Because then after you prayed, you then continued to worry about what you prayed about. Does anybody else do that? Yeah. We pray, and then we end prayer, and we say amen, meaning, here you go. But then we continue to worry about it. And I was like, Jenna, you're not, you're not that confident in your prayer. So how can you go up and speak about confidence in prayer and bold prayer whenever you don't even have it yourself? So I was like, okay, well, how about we talk about overcoming our worry and overcoming our fear of prayer so that we can become confident. So my title of this lesson is Scared Prayer. And the, I want you guys to kind of like 
Imagine this in your head so you understand fully what I mean by scared prayer. Imagine this, because none of you guys have kids except the adults, and I don't have a kid. So imagine this, because in the TV shows, we see the mom that has a kid who has to go out for the first time without her kid, and, you know, they have the babysitter. They did the whole background check on the babysitter before they leave. They make sure that the babysitter has all the numbers, right? We see this on the TV shows and the movies. We know what I'm talking about. They... They leave, the, they leave the babysitter, and in the car, they're freaking out. They're like, they're worried about the kid whenever they're away with the babysitter. They're freaking out um, that they should go back home. They're worried. They keep on calling the babysitter. They're just not having full trust in this babysitter with their kid. And I want you to relate that to our prayers. See, whenever we pray, we give it up to God. We make sure that he knows exactly what we want and, our, and exactly what our desires are. And we say amen, and we still worry. And for me, I go back and I go, God, did, did you hear me? Did, did you hear that prayer that I said about putting this person in my life? Or did you hear me about saying, like, give me this college in my life? Did you hear any of that, God? And, and I worry. But in this verse in 1 John, it says that we, we give it up in confidence. And, and we know he hears us. And it's in the confidence that we pray. And that we have confident prayer. So... I want to talk about why we have scared prayer. And a story that I have about my scared prayer um, is one, t well, senior year, it's senior year, obviously for me. And none of you guys are in senior year, except a few of us, but I think some of us will understand how scary it is in senior year, right? Um, scholarships, picking schools, um, it's scary stuff, but I let it get to me so much that actually I fainted at school because I was so scared. And I laugh about it now because I remember laying in bed, just bawling my eyes out, praying to God, like, God, just tell me what you want me to do. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. I don't even know if I should be a nurse. Like, God, just please. And that's where it should have ended. I should have been able to give it up to God, but I woke up the next morning. I only had coffee and a protein bar, which is probably why I fainted. But I'm going to say it's because I was stressed. And I, I just didn't have confidence in my prayer. And I just... Whenever I look back on that, I wonder, if I believe in a great God, a God that created me, and a God that has such a plan for me, that gives me an identity, that helps define who I am as a Christian and a believer, why am I so afraid of giving up my situations to him? And I hope I'm not the only one. <laughs> I hope that you guys understand that. So we're going to talk about maybe reasons why we're scared and how we can overcome those fears. So my first reason, maybe you're scared because you don't know how to pray or you don't think your prayer is good enough. Now, I don't know if maybe you're new in your relationship with Christ or you've been in your relationship for, with Christ for a couple years, but for me, it took me a long time to understand that prayer is not something that you do strictly before you eat and strictly before you go to bed. Prayer is not like that. Prayer is not a fancy thing that you do with God. Prayer is not something strict that you have with God one-on-one -on -one at a certain time in the day, and you, then you go to church, and then you pray a lot at church, but then you go back and you do before breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then before you go to bed. It's not like that at all. I heard this story about this guy that I went um, to the Dominican with last summer, and he told me that he doesn't say amen until before he goes to bed. He prays throughout his day, not before, well, he prays before he eats, but he prays continually through any situation. Wherever he's at, he's praising God and praying to him, but he doesn't say amen until he lays his head on his pillow. And that's kind of what you, I want you guys to think about whenever you think of prayer. It's a flow, and it's something that you guys just do continually throughout your day, and then you say amen, and that's Kind of like whenever you say, like, okay, peace, God. But it's whenever you kind of just lay it down. There's a verse that kind of talks about this, and it's Psalms 55, 17. Okay, yeah. And it says, evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. So something that I realized throughout my journey in my relationship with Christ, I realized that I am not one to sit down, close my eyes, fold my hands, and pray. Whenever I do that, I think about other things. My mind goes in a million directions. I can't concentrate on what I have to say to God because my, my mind just goes everywhere. So I learned through myself and as I grew in my relationship that I pray best whenever I journal. 
I'm one to always have a journal with me with my Bible, and I will write down pages upon pages journaling to God. And so maybe that's something that you guys can do if you struggle with praying, and if you think like you're not good enough at praying, or if you don't know really how you're praying, maybe you can just sit down and write it. Just write it or draw. I like doodling. I'm one to doodle. If you don't follow my Instagram or my Snapchat, you don't know, but I doodle. I doodle a lot. So maybe your way of praying is by journaling. Or, or maybe your way is worship. Our worship team does an amazing job of praising God before someone speaks, and we're just able to really build it up. I love worship here. I don't know about you guys, but worship here is pretty awesome, and we are just able to just praise God in a way of singing. And for me, not just on stage am I singing to God and praising Him, not just out there, but in the car ride to school or from work or from school. Like, wherever I'm at, in the car, in the shower, I sing, and um, at work I sing. It's Sing, it's singing to God because he is my song, and I, I sing to him, and that's how I'm also praying to him. So it's not just sitting down, closing your eyes, and folding your hands that you're praying to God, but also in ways that you're just communicating with him. And so I heard this one quote from Louis Giglio. It says, um, I don't know if we have a slide. We might not. No, we probably don't. It says, worship and worry cannot be in our mouths at the same time. One always displaces the other. And I think that really defines what I talked about. Whenever you worry, you're not worshiping God. Whenever you worship God, you have no worry. And I think that's awesome. So another mis um, reason why we might have fear in our prayer is that we're worried God isn't listening. I think this one is really hard for um, us as Christians to understand. Because God's not someone that you kind of like go to his house, bring a thing of cookies, and knock on his door and say like, hey, let's talk. He's not like that. He's kind of like... You have to take on your own time and pray. What I mean is, like, he's not like a human being where I can just, like, be one-on-one -on -one with him. Like, human being-wise, he's, like, you know, spirit-wise. You know what I mean? Are you picking up on from now? Okay. Anyway, moving on. I always find myself trying to tell God what I want and telling him my desires and not really letting him talk back. So I'm always worried that he's not listening when really the question is, am I listening back to God? See, in our relationship with Christ... I call it a relationship because it is. It's not just a religion, it's a relationship. And in any other relationship with your boyfriend or your girl, girlfriend or your parents or your teachers, you're not the only one talking to them and then, you know, like you walk away and you don't let them talk back, right? You, you let them talk and you, let, you listen to what they have to say, right? And that is how your relationship with Christ has to be. You talk to God and you tell him your situations or you tell him all the amazing things that go on in your life. And then you have to remember to sit back and let him talk back to you. He's one that has so much to fill you up with, not just in the Bible, but also just in the way that you live and the people that he puts in your life and the situations that he puts in your life sometimes are ways that he's talking to you. So the thing that may be a point of why you're worried that he's not listening, maybe the thing is that you're not listening back to him. So just don't forget to listen back to him. And a verse that I have for that is Ephesians 1.18. And it says... I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy name. And I love that verse because it says, in the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. So we may go to God and we may do the praying part and we may talk to God about what's going on in our life, but are we then understanding that he has his set plan? And that he has things that he, that he wants to tell us and that he wants us to go through because he loves us. So this verse is really helpful because it reminds us that we need to understand that he has a set plan for us. So if you pray to him, just don't forget to let him talk back to you. Another reason why we may be scared to pray is that we may know that God will tell us something that we don't want to hear. This is something that I struggle with big time because I always want it to be my way, right? And it, I think all of you guys kind of want to go your way. And I think it's so hard to understand. And it's not just us humans now. Back in the Bible, people even did this. For example, Jonah. I hope we all know the story of Jonah, you know, the one that's swallowed up by a whale. But Jonah w w ran away. He ran away from God because God said, Jonah, go down to Nineveh and tell them about me. And Jonah's like, heck no, I'm not doing that. And he ran and he got swallowed by a fish, which is crazy. I don't think that happens to us now, but we also run away as Jonah did from what God tells us to do because we're like, no, those people from Nineveh are whack and I don't want to put myself in that situation. But in the end of Jonah, we see that Jonah then listens to God. He goes to Nineveh. Those people are still whack, but at least Jonah listened to what God had planned for him. 
And we see God work in ways like that once we listen to what he has planned. I think for me, going through high school, I can look back and see ways that I ran away from what God had to say and re- in ways that I did what God had to say. I would not be up here on the stage if I was a freshman. I was too scared and I didn't listen to what God had to say back in that time. But now that I was able to listen to what God had planned for me and I'm able to just really hear what he has in store, I'm able to follow his way and I'm able to follow his light and I'm able to stand up on here and serve him in a way that is just glorifying his kingdom. And a verse that I have for that is um, from Proverbs, yeah, cool, 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. I love this verse. And I think this one is a classic, some might say, a classic because we all know to trust in the Lord. And we all know to lean not on our understandings, but to submit to him, I think, is the hardest one. I think submitting our lives, submitting our situations, just giving it up, living in humility to understand that he will make our path straight. We won't go on, well, I mean, we will have roller, roller coasters, but it'll be his roller coaster. And I think that's the coolest roller coaster of them all. Um, so I do have a commitment for you guys. It says, I will let go of my worry and pray confidently to Jesus Christ this week. Um, let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for all that you have done and for helping us understand that prayer is to be confident and bold and that we are to just lay it all down to you and not have worry and to not be scared and to not worry if you're listening and to not worry if it's good enough or bad enough or, you know, not right. I don't know. God, I just pray that we are just able to submit our lives to you and just have full confidence in the words that we say. I pray that in small group we're able to talk more about prayer and to be open about ways that maybe we can talk more to God um, if we do feel a little distant, but that we're just able to glorify you more and more. Amen. If you do want to say this commitment with me and live it out this week, um, join me. I will let go of my worry and pray confidently to Jesus Christ this week.